Today's movie is sort of like a Hong Kong version of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And yeah, that's as awesome as it sounds. Welcome to Sick Flicks, where I take a deep dive into the cinematic sewer to help you embrace your inner gore geek. I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, and today we're tackling Bowie Lau's Hong Kong slasher flick, The Deadly Camp, 1999. Released in 1999, The Deadly Camp provides a glimpse into how Hong Kong filmmakers approach slasher cinema. This one doesn't break the mold at all, but there's an oddly comforting familiarity to a story of a bunch of young adults trapped on an island being picked off by a dude wrapped up in gauze and armed with a chainsaw. And it also features the always entertaining Anthony Wong in a small supporting role as really just icing on the bloody cake. This really is sort of like an Asian riff on the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, at least as far as the killer goes. The presence of both Anthony Wong and the fact the film was produced by Wong Jing's workshop might have you expecting this to be another Hong Kong Category 3 sleaze fest. But this one actually got the lesser Category 2B rating, meaning it wasn't for kids, but also wasn't quite as depraved as the infamous Cat 3 films. But enough about that. Can the Deadly Camp kill enough annoying 20-somethings to earn a coveted 5 barf bag rating? Let's get to the gore and find out. Oh, and before we get started, today's video is sponsored by Jay Jefferson, Martin Boyle, and Michael Raycraft. If you'd like to help sponsor some videos and free me from the shackles of YouTube's tyranny, you'll find a link to my Patreon in the pinned comment in the description below. And now, let's get bloody. Open up and may ah! <laughs> oh shit, straight from Wong Jing's workshop. This is gonna be amazing. I feel like we should probably stop for a second here to talk about Wong Jing, because he is, to put it mildly, a bit of a polarizing figure in Hong Kong cinema. If you think Takashi Miike is prolific, well, Wong has reportedly made over 175 films to date. Everything from martial arts flicks like Holy Weapon, to Cat 3 stuff like The Inimitable Naked Killer, to more well-received things like God of Gamblers. His Wikipedia entry notes that Hong Kong critics often find his films loud, crass, and philistine in their presentation. For his part, he says his filmmaking philosophy simply boils down to giving the audience what they want. And honestly, that's kinda why I love him. Kinda just makes weird, wild movies. And straight into the action. Filmed in Tyrion Lannister vision. Honest to God, if you played Credence's Run Through the Jungle over this, you could convince people it was an actual music video. <laughs> I sure hope they run into Tak Sakaguchi and the start of verses out here. Or a dude with a chainsaw. <laughs> Honestly, did they get Tarantino to film this opening? All these feet shots are weirding me out. Ah uh, yeah, tripped over a root. If you had that on your B-movie bingo card, mark it. Hell yeah, this is the best use of a chainsaw in a Hong Kong movie since Tiger on the Beat. Hey, happy Sega Dreamcast release day, everyone. God, I love the Dreamcast. And great, is this a movie or a vlog? Welcome back to my channel. For today's movie, we'll be going to a deserted island to be stalked by a madman. I'm not gonna lie, I'd watch the hell out of that vlog. Starring Hong Kong icon and Cat 3 film king, Anthony Wong. We previously saw Anthony Wong in The Untold Story and Ebola Syndrome, both of which got me in trouble with PrudeTube. So pray for this video. Also, probably should point out that Wong is really an esteemed actor in Hong Kong, having been in stuff like Infernal Affairs and Hard Boiled and winning Best Actor awards. But then he'll turn around and do Category 3 films. <laughs> I love this dude to death. Seriously, one of my favorite actors in the whole world. And back to the movie, where we're just introducing all the future victims. Clearly Linda there is running a beauty channel judged by all the powdering going on. And here's Uncle Breezy, which would be a better name if he was driving a sailboat. Alright everyone, grab your bags. Remember, you bring the poop back with you. He's actually taking everyone's phones and devices, which will be convenient when the killer shows up and no one can call for help. It is nice, they basically filmed this vlog in like 360p on a flip phone though. I mean, this shit's grainier than granola. And directed by Bowie Lau. This was his first feature. <laughs> oh shit, I think they just sailed to the island from Anthropophagus. Interesting title card. Not sure blue was the right choice though. I <laughs> sure hope we stop at the grainy handheld footage. I'm gonna need Dramamine if we don't. Look, I'm gonna need you to get lots of shots for our first Asian Girls Gone Wild video. We're counting on you. Don't worry though, he's not gonna miss a shot, and here's the exposition to prove it. I wonder if 
that'll be important later. Place your bets now. Over here, this dude has pitched a tent. Hell yeah. <laughs> no, not like that, you pervs. An actual tent. Oh man, remember when rocking the puka shells was the key to hooking up with the ladies? So far, this movie is mostly a testament to late 90s tech. We've had a JVC video recorder, the Iowa mini boombox, and now this guy's got a Sony Discman. Do <laughs> kids even remember any of those things? Christ, I'm old. From the woods, Jason looks on in anticipation. Alright, we're just gonna bury the phones here under this pile of human remains so I can find them again. And the killer's gonna steal them. <laughs> I'm gonna make a ton of long distance calls and run up their roaming charges. Aw oh, man, see? The puka shells work every time. Anyway, she's brought him out here to give him a little gift. Hell yeah. No, an actual gift of these cleats. That's random. Nothing says love like a pair of cleats, apparently. Oh, honey, you went to Foot Locker. 到时要着住我呢对钉鞋，参加下个月嘅全港公开田径比赛，一定要攞个冠军翻嚟俾我噶。咁你而家算系贿赂我啊，定系鼓励我咧 ？Oh, I see. This isn't even a gift for him. It's a tool, so he can get a gift for you. The good news is he got a gift for her too. <laughs> I sure hope it's not his egg roll. So far, this movie is really big into random weird shots of people running. <laughs> oh sweet Jesus, fakest moon ever. Anyway, it looks like everyone's trying to hook up. Hey babe, if your love is Crystal Lake, then I'm Jason Voorhees, cause I'm drowning in it. Then they head into the tent. I was going to make some more camping puns, but I didn't want to get into a bit of a flap. He's about to score, but judging by this silhouette, Darth Vader is out there with the C block. Oh, hey, it's not Darth, it's more campers. I approve because this just really increased this movie's potential body count. Hey, look, it's Anthony Wong. And he's here not to be a perv, but to provide condoms. That's helpful. You know what they call a group of people singing about condoms? A rubber band. Anyway, nothing much is happening here. I need this thing to pick up the pace. It's only 84 minutes and we need to get to the gore. But sure, let's stop for a song first. I mean, why not? Ian Sarah, what do you think? It stinks. Also, this movie is very obsessed with condoms. I guess you could say this is a real torch song. They stop to drain the lizard and it turns into a real golden shower. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly like that. Well played, pervs. This guy's all wet. Oh yeah, someone's been doing some curls. Nice. Then our weirdo somehow catches on fire. I mean, that's hard to believe since he's probably still pretty damp. Oh yeah, that arm looks like they left it on the grill too long. Rookie mistake. Oh, so is that Dark Man attending to him? You kids even remember Dark Man? Christ, I'm old too. At any rate, he's gonna calm him down by giving him this Flavor Flav starter kit. Man, Jimmy Hart is really pissed off that Lawler hit him with that fireball. How get you, Lawler? Also, for as much as this gets labeled as a Friday the 13th ripoff, I'm getting stronger Texas Chainsaw vibes here. Anyway, if you've ever read Save the Cat, you know all horror movies supposedly start with a sin. And burning this kid is apparently the sin the campers are going to pay for here. Yeah, really, it's a shame it took almost 30 minutes to get to this point. All I can really tell you right now is that I hope he kills these two idiots first. Yeah, the whole movie basically grinds to a halt here so these two morons can try to tell jokes. So in other words, it's a lot like this show, only with one fewer idiot. And while they're working on their routine for the next open mic night down at Snickers Comedy Club, they totally miss finding the lady who got chainsawed in the opening. <laughs> no idea how she's still alive. Anyway, this weird comedy in a horror movie is not all that unusual for Hong Kong cinema. Filmmakers in Hong Kong realized a lot of locals didn't get to see a ton of movies each year, so seeing one was sort of a special occasion. And to appease a wide range of audiences, they often crammed in a lot of disparate elements into the films, which is how you wind up with the wisecracking cops in the untold story, or these two idiots here. Back at camp, everyone's getting wet. Hell yeah. No, I mean they're swimming. Turns out we might be about to get our wish because one of the idiots is heading into the woods. I mean, I don't want to rush you, movie, but it would be super awesome if something would finally happen. Oh, sweet, his buddy's going too. 
can we please kill both? Yep, this dude is all tied up and I'm totally here for it. Wait, who the hell is this? We've got Anthony Wong who's been in this movie for like two minutes. Can we just bring him back? <laughs> I think this guy is basically doing the worm. Oh wait, that dude is totally at the end of his rope. Literally half the man he used to be. Look, this is me after the fifth gummy kicks in. Oh, looks like someone's about to have an accident and not a moment too soon. But instead he just gets peed on like he's the dude's rug. And what is it with this movie and the condoms and urination? With that done, dad shows up presumably to finish the job. Oh, this has been a pretty big drag so far. <laughs> oh shit, he's gonna pick his brain like this is one of those cartel videos. I'm gonna need you to hold steel while I kill you with this chainsaw. Oh hey, Anthony Wong's back. Wong's like, listen, I was in Hard Boiled. I'm not putting up with any stupid shit in this movie. I feel like this movie really nailed one thing, and that thing is the need to fill your slasher movie with a cast of completely unlikable people. I'm ready for everyone but Anthony Wong to die. I mean, we lost one dork, but this one's still wandering around. Aw, I guess no one invited the cameraman for dinner. Back at the tent, Anthony Wong's getting lucky, but our killer's about to lend him a hand. And then Wong gets a heaping helping of pimp fist. Jesus, I guess the mummy hit on some hard times. The gist here is that the killers captured them and Anthony Wong is willing to trade his girlfriend for his own freedom. <laughs> what a guy. But it turns out dad has other ideas and this is probably gonna be sawful. <laughs> I'm sorry for that pun. I should have cut it out of the script. She's getting cut like Franklin in Texas Chainsaw, Anthony Wong makes his break and runs right into a booby trap, which could have been an Adiodato cannibal flick. Guess he got the point. And great, I guess they could only afford Anthony Wong for like a day and now we're stuck with the rest of these dorks. Then these two wander off to shoot a Summer's Eve commercial. Do you ever get that not so fresh feeling? Well, it turns out it's not her, it's just Anthony Wong's corpse, and I'm guessing they don't make a summer's eve for that. Well, she's inspecting the body, her friend gets kidnapped, so maybe this movie will finally get popping as everyone heads off to look for her. And Commander's not going off unarmed, he's got one of those sweet Rambo survivor knives he used to get at the flea market. Well, I didn't get one, my parents weren't cool like that, but... You probably did. Anyway, he's out here deep in the bush. Hell yeah. No, I mean the jungle. If it bleeds, we can kill it. Wait, wrong movie. A um, movie? I don't need to see him search the woods in real time. Trust me, it's not that interesting. He eventually finds the lair, but surprise, the killer has found him. My God, the mummy is laying the boots to him. Probably a better JR than this scene deserved. Commander's mounting a comeback, but our killer is basically no-selling all his moves. But look out, Commander's got a foreign object in this no disqualification match. <laughs> oh yeah, this is definitely a matter of knife or death. And while they can hear their friends screaming in agony, this chick decides that this is a perfect time to play the blame game. Our annoying guy heads off to find his cell phone, but the killer finds him too. Man, this killer is good. I'm sorry, we're gonna have to cut your service. But sure, I suppose this is as good a time as any to watch the dailies. Oh hey, Chekhov's night vision. I knew that was gonna pay off. Man, it's been a while since we had a foot shot. Oh. Spoke too soon. Do they really even need night vision? It's brighter than a 7-Eleven parking lot out here. That's a wrap. I mean, come on, you'd have to be blind not to see them out here. Ray Charles can see these dudes, but before he can stumble upon them, they decide to flash him instead. Hell yeah. No, with the flash on the camera. Dude was clearly not prepared to be on this week's episode of Candid Camera. Anyway, he had something to kill baby, but his kid is not down for that. Unfortunately for her, he is not swayed by this argument. I mean, you can't spoil your kids. And just insert your own Brandon Tennell decapitation here. <laughs> not gonna lie. I'm bummed this was done in silhouette. What is with that lately? And Srigala too. And now it's time for more running through the jungle. Even though they're fleeing for their lives, this chick still finds time to complain. <laughs> How do you say Karen in Cantonese or Mandarin? 
I mean, she does sort of have a point. You're being chased by a masked madman and they stop because this girl basically got scratched. Anyway, Karen keeps beating on him, so he gives her a taste of his pimp hand. Naturally, this leads to them all splitting up, and I'm sure this is gonna work out great. Oh, so what the hell is with this music? Did they just download free tracks from the YouTube library? We need not gonna lie, guys. I'm starting to remember why I bought this movie in like 2001, watched it once, and then never thought of it again until I got the idea to do this video. Since they can't find the girls, this seems like a good time to stop and think some deep thoughts. Why isn't a group of squids called a squad? This is basically the film's Dark Knight of the Soul moment, where everything seems lost, but we're about to break into the final act. And <laughs> man, am I ready for the final act. The first step to getting there? Following the goofy kid back to the lair. God, this is like one of those terrible Assassin's Creed stealth missions. <laughs> Look at this player. Eventually, our heroes take the kid hostage. But the killer isn't going to take that sitting down. That being said, it looks like it's working. Well, it was working until they tripped this booby trap. Hell yeah. No, an actual booby trap. The good news is this dude won't have to listen to his girlfriend blame him for everything anymore. Ah, the sweet silence of the grave. Dad, meanwhile, is pissed off. I really wonder how he gets gas for the saw on this island. And now Puka Shell Guy is at his Popeye point. Oh yeah, this totally rocks. Looks like he's got a very bolder plan to finish this once and for all. I will say, it's really nice of the killer to just disappear while he rigs a bunch of traps in the woods. Hey, hey, don't waste my urine sample. Man, Chekhov's cleats are back too. This movie is just tying up all the loose ends. I know you see what I did there. Man, just imagine if Dutch had taken out the Predator with a conveniently placed bag of rocks. And since we need to pad the runtime a bit, let's just stop for a flashback to things you just saw. You know, just in case you dozed off. And now that everything's set up, it's nice of the killer to arrive. Oh yeah, this is me anytime someone puts Miley Cyrus on the radio. Too bad for them, he's spotted the rocks. Great, all that time to prepare and they came up with a plan that could be completely defeated if the intended victim took two steps to his left. Except... And he gets impaled. This scene really spikes for itself. But that can't be the end, can it? I've seen a lot of slasher movies in my day. I smell a swerve coming. And there it is. What? A second killer? This is like Scream now. So, fun fact, the DVD case kind of gives this away on the front cover. The killer pictured is this one, not the one you've seen all movie. This one is the mother. Run, Forrest! If you look here in our slowed down version, you can see the rubber blade on the saw flapping as she runs. Anyway, they run right to the edge, and his cleats save him, but she's not so lucky. Mannequin falling to its doom. God, I will never get tired of that. And this ending was almost a real cliffhanger. All right, let's get to the docks and find Uncle Breezy. Here will offer a reduced rate on the return trip since so few of them are left. Oh, hey, who's ready for one more swerve? <laughs> I know I am. <laughs> oh, yeah, there it is. That's very handy. And cue credits. So, what have we learned from Deadly Camp 1999? Well, for starters, that the language of slasher cinema is universal. America will always be known as ground zero for the proliferation of slasher films, but a lot of other countries have taken a stab at making their own versions of the popular stock and kill flicks. Deadly Camp is not the best Hong Kong slasher flick, and probably give that honor to 2010's Dream Home, but it's fun to see people from other parts of the world put their own spin on the tropes and formulas of the format. Deadly Camp doesn't do one single thing you haven't seen done before, and done better, but it's still interesting if you're a student of the genre. But enough about that. Can Deadly Camp kill enough campers to earn a coveted five barf bag rating? Let's go to the gore card. In terms of gross anatomy, Deadly Camp is fairly middle of the road. I will admit, having seen tons of great Hong Kong Category 3 films over the years, that I expected this one to be a lot more gruesome. Unfortunately, this one pulls its punches a bit. We're treated to multiple chainsaw deaths, multiple people killed by booby traps, one decapitation, a stabbing, and one mannequin falling to its doom. There's just enough splatter here to give this one a respectable three barf bag rating. It's not as sick a flick as it should be, but it has its moments. Looking for another foreign slasher effort? Then be sure to check out my review of Srigala. You'll find a link here on the screen. I'll meet you over there.
Until next time, I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, bringing you all the splatter that matters.